Figma now comes with glass. We now have a new glass effect in Figma. Here's everything you need to know about this latest Figma update. This feature is currently in beta, so here are its current limitations. It only works on frames currently, so no other element can apply a glass effect. It needs to have consistent corner radius, so if you have a component with mixed corner radiuses, it's not gonna work. All four corners have to be the same. I assume that has to do with how they're generating the effect. Glass on glass does not compound. It's not gonna be a super cool effect. It's just gonna have a little bit of blur on the glass. It's unable to be exported as an SVG, which means it also is not gonna work in the browser. So Figma sites is a no-go. But of course, hopefully they will improve on this when it comes out of beta in the future. Now let's get hands-on with the new feature. Here in Figma, I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard for a new frame and just drag one out. So now that we have a frame selected, Obviously we have to go to the effects panel here on the right and I can select the plus to add a new one. And then from the dropdown, I can select glass and you'll see it's currently got the beta tag. And here we can adjust the five different options. We have light, refraction, depth, dispersion, and frost. So let's break down each one of these settings. First you have light. Here you can change the angle and you can change the intensity. So how intense the light is, you can see it's getting brighter here or it gets a little bit more subtle as I drag it down. And the angle just changes the way the light is hitting the glass. You can see the element is represented by the square, so it's casting light this direction. Then we have refraction. This is gonna control the way the light bends along the edge of your glass. The higher you make this, it's gonna to start to warp the objects around it. So you'll see here, especially when I get towards the A, it's gonna to start to separate and really bend inward. Next we have depth, and this is going to make the glass material appear to be thicker and have a more pronounced lip on the edge of the frame. So as I drag that up, you can see how it kind of makes this look like a thicker sheet of glass. And you can even go crazy with this and get some real warping action there. Then we have dispersion, which is really cool. And this is gonna give a hint of chromatic aberration to the edge of the glass frame. I hope I said that correctly. I've never said those words in my life. I think it's kind of like the movie theater glasses 3D effect where you got the blue and the red that kind of go like one pixel off and it kind of makes it look 3D-ish. And one thing to note about dispersion is it works best when paired with refraction. So if you see, I turn refraction down, you can barely see the difference in the dispersion. So if you really want the dispersion, make sure you have a bit of refraction in there. And you can see here, we're getting a bit of the reds coming through. And if I increase it a little bit more, we get more of the blue. And lastly, we have frost, which is just going to apply more blur to the elements underneath or behind, making this look a little bit more frosted, like a frosted glass pane. So now that we've covered everything in detail about the new glass effect, let's actually put it in use and make a component with it here in Figma and see how it works. I got this image from Unsplash just by searching, I think, Apple wallpaper. I just dragged that in here. And we're gonna add our frame now. And I'm just gonna make this kind of like a tool tip with a, a bit of text and maybe like an icon in here. Then I'm gonna load up the material design icons plugin, hit run on that. I'm gonna set it to 24 by 24 and we'll just leave it at the black for now. Insert that into our design by clicking. So we'll put that off to the left. Let's grab some text with T on the keyboard. This is going to be our paragraph size type. So let's make it pretty small. Let's make it like 12. And then we'll add a bit of gray in it there. Something like that. And then I'm going to hold option or alt and click and drag to make a duplicate. This one we're going to bump up to 16, which will be kind of like our heading font. And we'll put that back down to black. We can even add a bit of weight to it, maybe medium or semi bold. And we'll give this a bit of heading and a sentence. And we'll throw those in a auto layout. Let's change the gap to eight pixels and then select the frame originally that we created. We can apply a horizontal layout. So that's going to grab the text and the lock icon here. We can add some padding all around, maybe 16 for now. And we can drag this out a little wider. Got to make sure both of these are set to fill. And then for the height, I want a hug contents. On our tooltip card here, let's increase the gap to 16 to match. And then let's make sure this is aligned centered. Our icon's looking a little small. So I'm gonna select it and hit Shift A to throw an auto layout around it. And then I'm gonna add a height and width of 48 to make it larger and make sure it's centered. 
So the icon is centered inside. And let's just give it a random fill color for now so we can see it. And add a bit of corner radius of like 12 to that. And then let's add a corner radius to our card as well. So let's go 12 to that as well. And let's actually lower this one to eight. Then I'm gonna play around with the look and feel of the card now. I can tell there's too much white space here. So let's lower that down maybe even to zero. I'm gonna put two just for a little bit of extra space. I want there to be a little bit more space on the right side so it's a bit asymmetrical. So I'm gonna select this icon here, go to the right value and I'm gonna bump it up to 24. And then let's actually add just a little bit more corner radius to make this look a little bit more rounded, like maybe even 20. And with that, we'll need to make this round just to kind of match it a little bit. It's like 12. So now we have our like little tool tip card, like pop-up card. I'm just gonna call it card for now in the layers. So with the card selected, I'm gonna go to the effects and I'm gonna add a glass effect. With that, we're gonna need to update our contrast on our text. So I'm gonna select both of them and turn them to white for now. And to get the contrast we had from the black and the gray, so that we can tell this is secondary, I'm gonna select this one individually and lower its opacity. Something like 60 or 70, just so it's lighter, kinda of like 70. So we're getting that same contrast we had when it's on a white background with the black text and the gray subheading, but we're using the opacity instead in this case. Now for our icon, I'm gonna change that to white as well. And then we can add the glass effect on to this rectangle. Since they're not gonna interfere with each other, since they don't kind of stack and make a weird effect, we can add a new glass effect and we can increase the frost and it'll make the contrast higher. We can also do that by increasing the white opacity. So there's some visual separation between the card background and the icon background. To make this look a little bit better, let's lower the opacity of this icon as well so that the background kind of affects the color of the icon. Now let's update our glass effect. So I'm gonna go into the main card glass and we're gonna leave it at a 45 degree angle with an 80% intensity. But let's change the refraction a little bit. I want it very subtle, so I'm gonna go somewhere like 20. And then for the depth, we don't want that very high either since this is kind of a small element is what I'm thinking. So we'll go with eight. The dispersion, you can't really see it, so I'm just gonna leave it at zero. And then for the frost, this is where I want to play around with how this looks with the text to get a good contrast. That's looking the most readable there. And of course, we can always change the opacity if we wanna make sure we get even more contrast, but I'm gonna leave it alone for now. And then let's go and edit the glass effect on the icon now. I'm gonna do the same angle because it wouldn't make any sense to have it different. Let's lower the refraction, lower the depth because it's a small element, lower the dispersion, and then the frost. I'm actually gonna lower it down to zero. So we're not really doing much glass other than the outline. But where we can do this is the intensity. We need to lower that, that is way too intense. So let's go with like 19 or 20. And then I even wanna lower the intensity here, I think, because this is a little too much for this element. So something like 25. And now we've got a little glass card. That looks really good. And you can see as I move it around here, the icon and the glass is interacting with the background. And it looks really nice. Ooh, over there on that deep blue looks great. Of course, don't forget we can add even more effects to this. So we can add something like a drop shadow. And you can see how much more that pops with that drop shadow. And that's gonna do it for today's video. If you feel like it, you can do the YouTube algorithm stuff to help push the video and the channel. But most importantly, make sure you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.